Hello, Dr. Goulet here, and I want to talk to you a little bit more about gender and leadership styles. First, we need to uh, acknowledge and realize that both uh, gender and the gender ratio of, of an industry will influence leadership style, and those are just a, a, a couple of elements that will. Furthermore, the individual self-concept um, and his or her ethical framework will influence his or her approach to managerial and uh, uh, leadership style, typical behavior. You know, uh, for examples are such as decision making, power relationships, peer interactions, just to name a few. Uh, women use more of an interactive uh, type of leadership style instead of a classic command control style, although Again, you know, we have seen women uh, and men use this as well. Uh, research, however, shows that these are typically uh, attributes to females in terms of leading, that it is an interactive leadership style instead of a classic command control style, and that women do seek to include subordinates more positively into their work. I don't necessarily agree with this statement because I have experienced some women who apply classic command style almost better than their male counterparts. Uh, in addition, men have the tendency to display transactional leadership behavior, meaning more use of formal authority, whereas women tend to display more of the transformational leadership behavior. Uh, meaning they rely on interpersonal relationships uh, and, and charisma. Um, I find that that particular research, again, not necessarily holds strong just because uh, I know I have seen it, uh, it's an experience and observed behaviors that, uh, in, in men that are attributed into uh, the leadership more towards the female traits classically that the research has talked about. And I think that the world and society uh, changes and, and so do female uh, leaders that I have to say that the majority I've observed don't really have charisma and interpersonal relationships at all. So um, I think some of the women I've experienced, uh, they didn't particularly care about the other. Uh, that they were only out for their own benefit, um, and uh, therefore they really didn't display the, the behavior that is discussed in the literature and attribute to two a typical female leadership styles. Now, again, uh, I have then perceived them as being very negative. Uh, that's just in my experience, though, and the research I have conducted has actually shown very uh, strong data on supporting that. Um, I think a woman's style is more focused on charisma, uh, according to the literature, I want to say, that, that it's more focused on charisma and uh, personal abilities, uh, interper interpersonal relationships, and commitment to others. And um, a man it, it is said in the literature, frequently emphasizes uh, uh, the avoidance of conflict, really, and, uh, and open confrontation. Um, and it's kind of a paradox to the classical authoritative male style. I think that men prefer consultative and authoritative styles, and they should not have a problem with addressing the issues head on. So there is a paradox uh, in the conversation around and uh, leadership styles uh, of female and male behavior. Uh, similar male and female gender stereotypes as far as leadership styles uh, were found by a researcher Engen. And his research shows uh, that the typical masculine characteristics in regards to leadership styles, uh, again, are competitiveness, emphasis on control, hierarchical authority, task performance and achievement of organizational goals, uh, being competent, rational, and assertive, for example. And uh, his research showed that typical female characteristics of leadership were noted to be primarily nurturing, interpersonal relationships, warm, tactful, sensitive, and expressive. So overall, female leaders uh, and managers are perceived to be more democratic in their leadership styles than their male counterparts. Uh, research says that a man's, it, it's a man's world, uh, and it's much harder to get to the top by applying female leadership style. 
And it's uh, interesting that research also pointed out that um, female leaders that are uh, successful and get to the top tend to display again more the female, uh, the male trait. Uh, and the female leader, I find, really, you know, they face a paradox. If they emulate masculine behavior or masculine leadership style behavior, their male subordinates will dislike them. It's really interesting. I have experienced that. My research has shown it, and so has past research shown that that was the case. And I also want to extend that and say that my research has shown and my experience that they will also be disliked by female subordinates. So uh, the, the other contradiction with females are, uh, that they are faced is uh, that if they are assertive and forceful and aggressive CEOs, they will be downgraded. Uh, yet if they are downgraded by their peers, um, especially their female peers, uh, yet if they are cooperative, they will be upgraded. So it's really the opposite. And what's interesting about this entire thing is that the opposite is true for, for male CEOs, and that's what also uh, research has shown. Uh, another thing that the democratic uh, leadership style uh, was perceived as the leadership style um, that determined the competency of the person displaying it. So uh, again, a researcher has conducted a field study that showed no gender differences in leadership styles between men and women, especially focused on the, the, the democratic uh, style that was displayed. Particularly, uh, the audience uh, was asked to rate their managers in terms of, you know, task orientation, people orientation, transformational leadership styles. and. I really came to wonder that if the transformational leadership style, which is known to be one of charisma, vision, inspiration, is actually genderless. Uh, that's something that we may want to discuss and think about and reflect upon. But one thing that I want to say is that it's, it's really evident that there are many contradictions when it comes to stereotypical perceived male and female leadership characteristics and beliefs about leadership styles. And at the same time, research also shows the development of a new genderless perception of what good leadership style actually represents and namely how it will affect the followers or the employees. So we need to consider that the emergent leader will really be selected by the group based on competency instead of gender, instead of just gender. And the composition of the group, like the organizational context, for example, will certainly have an influence on who is selected as a leader and uh, who is perceived as an effective leader. I look forward to any input you may have on this. Thank you so much.